Okay, uh, let's get uh, started. So <coughs> this session is about uh, JavaScript uh, on, on Zephyr. My name is Sakari uh, Posa. Uh, I work for Intel. Uh, I'm part of the, the web platform team there, which uh, mission is to enable JavaScript on, on, on various platforms, including IoT and, and, and now finally on, on Zephyr. Um, <coughs> there's a lot of uh, topics here today which I want to cover. Uh, first, a little bit about the why we want to run JavaScript on these MCU class devices. Then uh, a little bit about the architecture, uh, how we've done it. And then uh, more specifically, how it's done on the Arduino 101. We have uh, uh, other boards as well, but that, that's the, uh, the where we started. Um, then uh, how everything comes together in, in our build system. A uh, couple of words about the, the security and the, the memory, uh, because those are the questions that usually uh, comes up with the uh, uh, JavaScript on, on, on these type of devices. Um, then we talk about the uh, the APIs, what we have now, uh, what we're planning of adding. Uh, then I'll show something, uh, what we've done also is, is a browser-based IDE, so you can use that to upload your JavaScript code on, on, on the board. Hopefully I have, uh, well, I have a demo, but hopefully it'll work, so it's a bit shaky, so that's a disclaimer, but uh, we'll see. Uh, then uh, the, the open source project itself, and uh, yeah, hopefully we can cover all of those topics uh, in the next uh, uh, 50 minutes. So <coughs> this is, uh, the, as I mentioned, I'm part of the, the web platform uh, team at Intel. And uh, this is uh, uh, our mission, meaning that uh, uh, you can use uh, uh, JavaScript for everything. You can write your cloud applications with nodes. Uh, you can uh, do your client uh, mobile applications with, uh, with the uh, uh, different uh, uh, frameworks there using HTML and JavaScript. Uh, the gateway uh, functionality, headless or, or, or headed, can be done with the node or, or with the crosswalk runtime, for example, we have. But really, this uh, presentation is about the, the very smallest devices, uh, the things, and, and, and especially on the uh, on Zephyr. So, the JavaScript the runtime for Zephyr OS—that's uh, the uh, project name—and uh, there's a couple of highlights here: of what it is and why we're doing that. So. The really, the big reason is that there's a huge JavaScript web developer community out there and we want to have a smooth path for those to, to come to the IoT and, and, and uh, being able to use, be able to use the, the Cephu board uh, on a Linux. Uh, the Node.js uh, story is, is, is pretty strong already. So we kind of want to uh, <coughs> offer uh, the same language and tools for the, uh, on, on, on Cephu. Another benefit of, of JavaScript is that the, the development cycle is it's pretty fast. You don't have any uh, compilations or flashing. You just copy the uh, JavaScript files over and, and, and run it, especially on these uh, embedded boards where, where you need to have uh, a lot of uh, you know, setting up the compilers and uh, development environments. Uh, what we hope also to have is it's really easy to use uh, uh, and, and good tools. Uh, one of them, I'll, I'll show you the, the browser IDE, and uh, uh, later on, uh, including the debugging and, and, and all the modern uh, software uh, technologies there. Our runtime is based on the Jerry script uh, that uh, Samsung presented uh, earlier this week. Uh, so what we have done is to build a API layer on top of that. I'll, I'll show you a little bit more details later on. What we try to do is t for those APIs is to <coughs> not to invent anything new, but based on those kind of well-known uh, JavaScript APIs where the Node.js is, is kind of the de facto uh, uh, standard there. Uh, the <coughs> the long-term goal is, is the uh, JavaScript application portability between the MCU and MPU platform, so you'll be able to take 
a Node.js program and run it on Zephyr. There's, there's a lot of uh, you know, details where it won't work, but in principle, that should be possible. Uh, right now, we support the Arduino 101 board, uh, which is based on the Intel Curry, and then the, the, the Freedom board, which is pretty popular ARM board uh, for NXP. Uh, so that's the start. Uh, the plan is to support, uh, follow the Zephyr OS uh, support board. The, uh, <coughs> the, the why part, why we're doing that, part of that was already mentioned in the uh, earlier slides, but that really the, uh, the address the big JavaScript community, having the cross OS APIs so you can have your you know, single skill set, the team can, can just do JavaScript and they can do end-to-end -end solutions. Uh, sharing code between these uh, two systems or, or actually all the systems. Another one is, is that uh, <coughs> we can run this uh, uh, JavaScript runtime also on the uh, uh, Linux, actually on the Mac as well. So, so you can do a lot of uh, uh, you know, developments on top of this runtime. You can start with Node, you can move to you know, this uh, uh, JavaScript runtime on Zephyr, continue on Linux or, or Mac, and then finally move to the uh, target. So that should give you plenty of options to how, to, how do you do your development. Okay, so another uh, benefit which I touched was the, uh, the, the development flow. On a na native side, as uh, most of you should know, the, uh, the cycle is really that you, you edit your code, you compile it, you link it, uh, and if everything is, is, is fine. Uh, you, you reboot your device. This is the, the cycle on the uh, Arduino 101. Uh, on some other boards, it might be a little bit, uh, you might say, one or two steps, but still the principle is the same. But then you reboot, then you flash your image, then you reboot again, and you run it. And then, you know, if something goes wrong, you, you repeat the cycle. Whereas on the, on the JavaScript side, uh, the, the cycle is simpler. You, you edit your code, you copy that to the target, you run it, and, and, and that's it. So the, the, the cycle is, is uh, shorter and, and, and faster. This is then uh, <coughs> highlighting the, uh, the how part. So what are the, uh, you know, uh, how we've done it. There's an architecture slide uh, on, on the next page, but uh, so really the, uh, uh, the Node.js uh, is, is way too big for the MCU devices. The, the V8, the engine in the, uh, in, in the uh, node itself takes like 10 meg of RAM. So that's clearly not a you know, viable solution for MCU where you have you know, hundreds of kilobytes of memory. But Node.js has proven that there is a good programming model for JavaScript on, on this uh, uh, type of environments, uh, event-driven uh, environment. And, uh, so that's what we kind of put the baseline that, okay, we would like to have something like Node.js, but for smaller devices. So earlier this year, we started the proof of concept. We took the Jerry script. We had a couple of other runtimes, uh, duct tape. We evaluated those as well. Uh, decided to go with the Jerry script and, and then uh, uh, took the Arduino 101 uh, board as the uh, uh, you know, uh, target and uh, <coughs> implemented a uh, few APIs like uh, uh, timers uh, or events actually based on the Node.js, uh, BLE API, then uh, the, the pin APIs, and, and uh, realized that, hey, this is possible. We can, we can run a fairly complex application on the Arduino 101, uh, <coughs> which has 80K of RAM and, and uh, uh, the only kind of a tweak we needed to do there was the ROM space. By default, this has uh, 144K uh, flash uh, available for the x86 side. So we needed more. Uh, uh, so we increased the uh, uh, size to 256. But uh, with that setup, uh, uh, we haven't been able to do everything uh, uh, 
needed. So really the, the target state is to uh, have the same JavaScript APIs on the, on the Linux on, on, on the Zephyr side. And uh, that should enable the, the application uh, portability. So here's the, the high level uh, architecture. <coughs> so on the right hand side you have uh, you know whatever MCU, the board you have. We have the Zephyr, uh, unmodified, we, we don't need any patching there. Same applies to the uh, JerryScript, uh, <coughs> the JerryScript uh, uh, nat well, natively upstream uh, builds for Zephyr, we are using that uh, unmodified. Then really the, the value add is the, the JavaScript API layer, which exposes the JavaScript APIs to the JavaScript application on, on top. Uh, then uh, on the uh, uh, left hand side you have uh, uh, the, on the bottom the, the integration. Uh, right now uh, we are a separate repo in, in a GitHub. I'll show you in the second uh, <coughs> at the uh, end where the, where the repository is. Uh, we open sourced that earlier this week so it's uh, <coughs> accessible to, to anybody. And uh, the, the, the make system, which I'll show in the next slides, will pull in all these dependencies to, together. So the way you start using your uh, uh, JavaScript runtime for Zephyr is that uh, you clone the repo uh, and uh, then you type make. This is the oversimplification. There's some, you know, uh, shell setup environment setup, uh, uh, you know, variables pointing to, you know, proper places. But, but in principle, once you've done your, uh, you know, shell environment uh, uh, environment variables, and save that to, uh, to a file. This is this is what you need, and uh, <coughs> the make has a lot of uh, uh, different options where you can start tuning things. But, uh, but what the build is doing. It's, uh, it's fetching the, the Zephyr.js uh, uh, from the uh, Zephyr git repo. Same goes with the Jerry script. Uh, it then uh, gets the, uh, the, the API layer, which is this repo. And then finally, your JavaScript application. There's a, a, a command line option to point to your uh, a JavaScript application, what you want to build. And then it's, it's building everything and out comes the, the Zephyr binary. And then uh, whatever uh, flashing mechanism you use, when Arduino you use the flashing on, on some other boards you can do something else. But uh, anyway, the end result then is then uh, you know, flashed to the MCU or the Zephyr board. And once it boots, it runs the JavaScript application you've uh, put, put in there. So, in a nutshell, this is the uh, the workflow. Uh, I'll show you. We have kind of a two different modes. We have the called production mode, which is which is this one. Then we have another mode, which is called developer mode, where uh, you only uh, build the 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 runtime. So you leave the JavaScript application out. So you just have a runtime, and then uh, with the command line tools or with the browser, you can copy over the, uh, the JavaScript file and, and, and run that. So <coughs> that's, that's kind of a, a, a more developer friendly. But uh, you know, if you want to put this one on, on production or to some demo uh, both, you want to have this production uh, type of environment where the JavaScript uh, application is embedded into your image. So you don't need to do anything, you just boot it up and it starts running. Uh, so this is then uh, a little bit more specifics on the uh, Arduino 101 port because uh, the way <coughs> the, uh, the board is set up, it actually has uh, two, well actually it has three cores, uh, the, the third one is the, is the Bluetooth one, but I'm not showing that one. Uh, so you have the x86 core there, the Kuri, and then you have the ARC. And the, uh, uh, the ARC has access to the, it, it's called a, a sensor core. 
so it has access to all the uh, you know I/O pins and, and and things like that. So we don't want to expose that complexity to the uh, uh, JavaScript side. So we are we are hiding that by offering a, 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 a JavaScript runtime support image on the ARC, and then uh, it has a IPC to the actual runtime, the JavaScript runtime running on the x86. So when you do a you know GPIO uh, call, for example, from your JavaScript application you don't know that it's actually going to be executed on the ARC side. The, the runtime and the support image takes care of all the, the IPC and uh, 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 the behind the scenes. On some other boards, this is not needed if you have a single core, but the JavaScript application is, is the same. So that's kind of a, uh, the portability uh, aspect of it. Okay, so then a uh, couple words about the security. Because when people hear JavaScript on the IoT, they obviously think about you know browsers and the uh, all the exploits uh, you have there. And uh, <coughs> so the uh, how we address the the security aspects of this one at this point is that. Uh, uh, as I said, we have the, the production mode and the developer mode. The developer mode is also called the insecure mode. So you may call the uh, production mode as a secure mode. But any time, uh, anyway, the, uh, during the build time in the production mode, we, the JavaScript source code is converted to a, a, a C string, which is embedded to the uh, Zephyr image. So it is. Uh, embedded to the, to the image, it's not sitting on, on any file system or anywhere. Uh, we on purposely uh, disable the eval function, and uh, uh, then the, the developer can uh, enable the uh, uh, developer mode with the special make uh, environment variable like dev equals a shell. Uh, then during runtime, we only the uh, the embedded JavaScript application, which is built into the uh, image, only that one is uh, uh, executed. We don't do right now. There's no way of, of, of doing actually any you know HTTP requests to to web pages. But even if there would be in the uh, 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 in the future you won't be able to go to a website and then download a JavaScript, uh, you know, JavaScript uh, piece of code and execute that. So that's, that's not possible. So that's in the browsers, that's the default behavior unless you disable JavaScript, which people don't do. And that's where the, most of the exploits uh, come in. And uh, <coughs> so that's uh, one of the protection uh, mechanisms. Then on the, on the developer mode, all the beds are off. Uh, you know, you can copy whatever file there, and it'll get executed. Then on the uh, on the memory side, uh, the the engine itself, when it boots up, without running any scripts, uh, the the RAM uh, memory consumption is about uh, 5k, uh, so it's not much. And uh, and then uh, really the uh, the memory consumption of the application uh, it really depends on the application. I mean, uh, you know, if you do Hello World, it's 5K. But if you do you know more complex, the the memory uh, consumption increases. Just uh, for the reference, uh, we have a, a demo um, in our booth. In uh, well, it's a Cephal uh, project booth. Uh, a demo uh, which is written entirely in JavaScript. I'll show you the, uh, the demo details in a second. Uh, but basically, it contains a uh, uh, BLE API. It's doing the uh, Google's uh, physical web uh, uh, advertising. Uh, it has a, a, a BLE GAT uh, service built in. Uh, which con contains two characteristics, uh, temperature and uh, LED control. 
and uh, we have the BMW, B, BM, BWM uh, and analog APIs. We have an I2C LCD there. And this is 200 lines of uh, JavaScript code, and this can fit into the Arduino 101 to the ADK of uh, RAM. And we are not actually using all of it, so there's, there's still quite a lot of space uh, available. So, as I said, if you haven't seen the demo, <coughs> here's the uh, uh, kind of a highlight of the, uh, the demo. So basically, <coughs> you have your JavaScript application running on the, on the Arduino 101. It has uh, uh, the BLE, uh, I2C, analog, and the way it works is that uh, the, we, we are the BLE, it's advertising this uh, 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 physical web uh, URL. So basically, the, whether with the physical web or the, it's called Eddystone nowadays, is that uh, you advertise an URL, you, you, you have your Android phone, it'll show up in the notification area, and uh, it, when, when, it, when you click it, it'll launch a, a well, the URL via the Chrome browser. So the browser, the, the URLs, uh, URL is, is pointing to a, a, a web application. Uh, the, the, the browser on the phone loads that. And then uh, it's using a, a web Bluetooth uh, API on, on, on the browser. So it's just a web page with the new API from the W3C. With that, you connect back to the uh, uh, Arduino 101, to the GAT service. And then you can uh, start reading the temperature, changing the uh, color of the RGB and, and all that. And on the Arduino 101, the, <coughs> the JavaScript, uh, the application is, is all JavaScript. Well, actually, the whole demo is uh, based on uh, web technologies. Uh, so that's kind of the end-to-end -end story here. OK. So then, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we have a, 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 a proof of concept prototype of the, uh, the browser IDE. And uh, <clears throat> what that means that uh, it, it requires a, a, the developer mode on, on the uh, uh, JavaScript runtime for Zephyr. So you need to build the image for Zephyr uh, in this uh, uh, mode and then uh, flash that to the uh, uh, Arduino 101 boards. That's the only one we have tested it, but it should work on other boards as well. And uh, uh, <coughs> the, uh, uh, what we don't have yet is a, a, a new, again, W3C standard called Web USB. And what that means is that uh, uh, you can uh, uh, it requires both sides. It, it requires the, the API uh, to be able, av available on the browser. Chrome uh, already has it behind a flag. And then uh, uh, on the uh, Arduino, one, well, on the, on the boards, you need to implement a web USB uh, compatible uh, interface. So it's, it's, it's different from the any other uh, available uh, USB interface descriptors or whatever they're called. So we are working on that one. So once you have that, all you need is uh, you know, your, your laptop and uh, USB cable and your board. And uh, <coughs> the, uh, I'll try to demonstrate this one now that uh, <coughs> you'll have your uh, uh, browser, uh, then your, your device with this setup. I'm cheating a little bit because we don't have the, uh, the web USB available now. <coughs> I'm, uh, I'm running a, uh, a small uh, node shim layer here on the host PC, which is uh, talking to the browser and, and then talking serial over the, uh, uh, to the, uh, the board. But that should be <coughs> unnecessary once we have the, uh, the web USB. And with that, uh, you can, uh, you know, once we have this one uh, uh, working, you can build command line tools. You can do, you know, third-party IDE integration pretty easily uh, directly from the browser. 
or with, with some other uh, mechanisms. So let's see. So this is the demo part that I give no guarantees, but uh, so let's see. So, so this is the Arduino uh, one-on-one boards running the JavaScript runtime. And uh, <coughs> it has an LED and a button. The target is to run a JavaScript application which blinks the LED when I press the button. Nothing very excited <coughs> other than the, uh, the workflow. So this is the node uh, server that I need to run there because we don't have that yet, the web USB. Uh, the code I want to run is, I'll take that from the, uh, the Cephyr.js uh, website or the GitHub. We have a lot of samples here. We have uh, re-implemented some of the Arduino uh, 101 uh, samples. So this uh, uh, button sample here uh, contains a uh, few lines of uh, JavaScript code. So I'll take that. I'll launch the, uh, uh, <coughs> the, uh, the browser uh, with the IDE. You also, we also have a, a small uh, shell here. So you can uh, type uh, you know, uh, uh, some commands here, which will be executed on the, uh, on the board. And then uh, you know, the, the results will be back, uh, echoed back here. So you can run file, uh, run uh, uh, programs. You can uh, uh, you have some uh, basic uh, file system commands and, uh, and things like that. So this is really pretty much a, a prototype right now. But, uh, but the, really what I wanted to show is that uh, <coughs> here's the, the editor. Uh, so you paste your code here. This is, this is based on the uh, node uh, module from Microsoft that they use in the Visual Studio called Monaco Editor. So you just plug it in that to your website and it's, it's a pretty powerful uh, editor just like that. So what I want to do now is upload the code uh, to the uh, uh, board and now the JavaScript uh, application should be running. And yes, I can you know, blink the LED with the button. Great. It worked. I've seen, I, I bet you've seen quite a lot of uh, LED blinking during these IoT conferences, but that's not the point. The point is that you can do your development on the browser, hit the upload button, and then you know, <coughs> it runs there. No flashing, no recompiling, no nothing. So <coughs> that's the uh, kind of the, the IDE part. And as I said, it requires uh, a little bit more uh, work on, on both sides, but uh, really the, the web USB is the key enabling uh, factor. We can also use the, the web Bluetooth, which I just uh, uh, which is part of our demo upstairs. So then you don't need any cabling to, to make this one uh, happen again. Okay, so that was the demo. Then uh, the, uh, the API kind of a comparison uh, between the Node.js, which runs on the uh, you know, Mac and Linux and, and, and Windows. It has a, a pretty <coughs> extensive set of APIs, I think like uh, 35 to 40 uh, HTTP uh, sockets, scriptos, file systems. It, it's a pretty good coverage. And then, uh, <clears throat> so we have implemented uh, uh, two of those right now. And uh, these, are, these are not uh, by no means uh, complete one-to-one uh, uh, -one mapping to the uh, uh, node APIs. But uh, there's uh, events, especially it's, it's pretty complete. Uh, the buffer uh, is missing a few methods and, and, and tweaks. But, uh, but then in the future, we plan to add more where it makes sense. 
and uh, then uh, in the in nodes environment where something is, is missing from the core, the NPM uh, kicks in and, and, and people can write those uh, NPM modules which extend the, uh, the APIs on the node. So what we have done is to, we've taken uh, uh, the, the kind of the best known, most widely used, most stable uh, uh, NPM packets uh, for certain uh, uh, APIs like the BLE. In the node world, there's, there might be, you know, 10 or more packages for the same API. So it's sometimes difficult to choose the right one. But anyway, we are using the, the Bleno uh, uh, <coughs> API. So basically what you should be able to do is to take your uh, uh, BLE uh, code written uh, on top of Bleno and, and run that on the uh, uh, Arduino or the, on, on Zephyr. Uh, the same with the GPIO, uh, the pins and buses API. Uh, uh, the Johnny 5 is a very popular uh, framework in, in the node world and uh, we are <coughs> following that API paradigm as, as much as we can. Uh, on the OCF side, uh, <coughs> we've uh, uh, done a IOTVD nodes, NPN packets. Uh, we've been doing that over a year. And uh, it has a pretty stable, good API. It's been used in a in, uh, in, in few other projects. So we are uh, have implemented the same API for the Sephir uh, uh, JavaScript runtime. So that's pretty much where we are. Uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, new APIs we want to do. Uh, like the co-app, MQTT. Another interesting area is the, is the W3C sensors. So <coughs> W3C is, is kind of entering the, uh, the IoT world by doing APIs which doesn't uh, require the, the browser environments, uh, more specifically the DOM. So <clears throat> all the APIs so far has been that, you know, you have a navigator dot or, or document, you know, it's, it's the DOM uh, binding there. But the, these sensor APIs are uh, browser independent and uh, they have been designed uh, with the spirit that they should be able to implement on a Node.js as well. So that's uh, what we are uh, planning of, of, of doing as well. Another uh, interesting API is the, is the HTTP, uh, but that requires a little bit more uh, plumbing on, on the uh, Zephyr side, namely the TCP, the HTTP parser, uh, and then uh, some uh, HTTP uh, API there. Uh, the uh, rough subject to change roadmap uh, is that uh, uh, <clears throat> for, for this uh, second half of the year, uh, we will have a subset of uh, uh, Node APIs, the OCF, BLE. Even though they are there, they are not complete, so we need to finish those. Have uh, uh, the PIN and, and buses uh, 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 APIs finished. Get this uh, uh, copy and run uh, feature completed. Uh, the, the way, for example, it works now is that you can, uh, uh, well, it's, it's, it's a prototype, let's put it that way. It worked on a, on a demo, but uh, we need to productize that and, uh, and make it uh, rock solid. Uh, we already have the Freedom Board support, but that's uh, very basic and uh, uh, enhance that. And then uh, moving forward to, to next year, add more uh, Node.js APIs. Uh, power and battery management APIs, uh, as I said, co-app, MQTT, NFC, uh, security and crypto APIs, the sensors, and then uh, 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 add the tooling, uh, like remote debugging, if the Jerry script is offering that to us. So <coughs> that's, that's part of the, uh, the tooling uh, roadmap. Uh, and as I said, you know, this is an open source project. We just open it. We are, uh, <coughs> here's the, the URL. Uh, it's under the 01 org. 
uh, uh, organization in the in the GitHub, and uh, we are totally open for you know contributions, participations, uh, you know comments, feedback, anything. Actually, we just got yesterday the first uh, external patch from Linaro. We were happily merging that uh, to to the project, so that's <coughs> that's all good. Uh, having said that, it's a early start, alpha quality type of thing. But uh, you can build already, if you, as you said, if you go to our booth. Uh, it's a stable demo. We have been running that like tens and tens of times uh, during this show. We have a lot of sample codes. Uh, one of them, those was the button. Uh, so <coughs> if you buy one of these boards and the, for example, the, the groove kits, you can just hook up the, the sensors, you know, take one of the samples, it should run and, and you should have your uh, board up and running in, in, uh, you know, very quickly. Uh, we also have the API documentation, so if you want to, you know, enhance the, uh, the application, or write your own, uh, all the API documentation should be up to date, matching the code. The README uh, should get you going. Uh, it may have some, uh, uh, you know, uh, gaps there, but uh, we'll, we'll improve that as, as we go. Okay, so as a summary, uh, we have <coughs> are pretty confident that the, you know the JavaScript application development on Zephyr, it's possible, it's usable, especially for the web developers who master JavaScript and lowers the barrier, uh, the bar to get started on on, on Zephyr and, and uh, these uh, MCU boards, and uh, you know. It's open source, please join. And uh, this is the, the, really the first step. And uh, we'll keep investing and, and, and doing, improving this one. So hope to see you on the project and uh, in the future events. OK, that's all I had. I think I have a couple minutes for questions, if there's any. Okay, going one, two, no, one question. So something about, about power and batteries. Okay. So what does it mean? Uh, it's vague right now, but uh, if, I mean, if, if, you, if you think about running this type of uh, uh, devices uh, on a battery, uh, I know that the Sephir uh, has some uh, power management mechanism uh, in there. So what that means is that uh, uh, we want to make sure that the JavaScript engine won't ruin the, 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 the power management. So if otherwise the, the, the Zephyr board would go into sleep and the JavaScript application or the runtime keeps spinning, spinning there and uh, uh, keeping the, the, the system awake. So I don't know if we want to expose that to a uh, or is there a need to expose the API to the, uh, to the application so it gets some callbacks that, hey, you know, we are going on, on, on to sleep. I don't know how the power management on Zephyr works. And the same for the battery that uh, <coughs> you should be able to get the, the battery level you have. So when you're running out of battery, the application should know that, hey, you know, I'm going out of business now. So that's, that's kind of the high level vision. How we're going to do those in details, I don't know yet. That's next year, right? Concerning the HTTP APIs, how high is this in the priority list? Is this something like, yeah, we want to do that, but it's complicated and we'll do it someday? Or is well, it, is it like, we're almost there? No, no, we, we, we are, we're definitely not there. I mean, we started that like, uh, uh, couple months ago, uh, but we needed to suspend the work because the, uh, we couldn't find a suitable HTTP library, which is small enough. Uh, and then uh, the, the Zephyr TCP stack was uh, 
how would I say, unusual, <laughs> to put it lightly. Uh, the, with the, well, okay, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's maybe a pr proper wording. Anyway, the new IP stack is coming. Uh, the TCP support there, uh, once we get it, <laughs> should be better. Uh, and then the HTTP library, it's, uh, I think uh, somebody mentioned yesterday that it's in the Cephu uh, uh, tree already or in some PR or Garrett. So that should uh, be merged uh, for the 1.6 release, which is due in, in a couple of weeks. So then we have those two roadblocks out of the way, but I'm hoping that the Cephu project itself will provide an HTTP C API that then we can do the bindings. So there's still okay. one thin layer or layer missing. But personally, I feel that it would be a very good API. So it's top of my list, but you know, if there's a missing thing, I cannot do much. Okay. Anything else? Okay, thanks for coming.